Gloria Copeland is Kenneth kind of Copeland's third wife. Mm. So if divorce is a sin, those are sinners right there. In today's episode, we are going into a very controversial topic. That is the topic of marriage and divorce. Um, this captivating narrative shared by prominent Christian leaders, Dr. Olumde Emmanuel and the renowned marriage counselor and pastor, Pastor Kingsley Okonkwo, on the complex and misunderstood topic of divorce within the Christian faith context. Their insights and light on the lives of well-known figures such as Kenneth Copeland, Joyce Meyer, and John Hagee, weaving a story that challenges conventional beliefs and invites us to reflect deeply on the grace and redemptive nature of God. Dr. Lili Mano, before sharing his personal journey through divorce, brings to our attention the marital histories of fathers and mothers in the faith, highlighting how God has used these individuals despite their past. Kenneth Copeland's journey through marriage and divorce, culminating in a long-standing union with Gloria Copeland, serves as a starting point for a broader discussion. He also talks about Joyce Meyer's transformation from a victim of abuse to a global ministry leader. And finally, John Hagee's impactful ministry following a divorce and remarriage further illustrate the theme of redemption and new beginnings. So without saying much further, let's jump into the video and we'll be right back to share our talk. Kenneth Copeland is presently mm. married to Gloria Copeland. These are fathers and mothers of the faith. Gloria Copeland is Kenneth Copeland's third wife. Mm. So if divorce is a sin, those are sinners right there. So everything they have built all their life, they are built on sin. Mm. So if you now look at Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, these are men and women of God that God has used. Oh, to they are phenomenal. Life. Yes. These are phenomenal. our fathers and mothers yes. in the faith. Yes. And you now say they have sinned. Then we are all sinners. Yes. <laughs> Kenneth Copeland got married to Ivy Bodiford in 1955 mm. and divorced her in 1958 after three years of marriage. Mm. Less than a year after the divorce, he got married to Cynthia Davis after divorcing his first wife. And that other one also was three years by 1961. He was divorced again. He waited for two years and married Gloria Copeland, third wife. Mm. And they've been married now for over 60 years. So what do you say about that? That he was a sinner because mm. he married, he was he married, he was he married. Because many times when people are getting married, so, number one, sometimes they marry too early. Sometimes yes. they marry, they are not immature. They are not even... Oh, they immature. marry for the wrong they reasons. They marry for the, they don't even know marriage. And it is wrong for you to now go and be discovering yourself inside where mm. you're supposed to have discovered yourself before you enter. Yeah. So, and then many of these things happen. Let me just give three examples. Number two, Joyce Mayer. Mm. First marriage lasted for five years. And she's married now to Dave Mayer. And they've been married since January 1967. And that marriage now is 56 years plus. Oh, wow. 56 years plus. And we can see, we know this same Joyce Mayer. Our ministry oh. is built on our ministry. This is somebody that the father was sleeping with her. Yeah. Incest in the family. Yes. Yes. This is someone that went through all kinds of abuse. From the first marriage, then the father himself did all kinds of stuff. And we have seen the restorative hand of God. And look at what Joyce Mayer's ministry done globally all over the world. Number three, John Hagee. John Hagee got married to Martha Downing in 1906 and divorced her in 1975 after 15 years of marriage. Mm. He married Diana Castro one year later in 1976, just a year after divorce. Mm. And they are still married today, six years later. And we see what these people have done. Massive, massive so, impact. Olubide Mano, God born again as a teenager. Okay, wait. First of all, before you go into your own story, so let's establish some, let's okay. establish some facts. Number one, divorce is not... It's not a sin. In fact, let's start it this way. Let's start it this way. Number one, divorce it's is not, not perfect, God's it's not yes, perfect will, of, will God. of God. Yes, so let's be clear. Uh, because as we go on, I know some people will say, oh, this man of God is sitting here encouraging people to divorce. Um... If you have ever experienced divorce or even seen somebody close up close that has experienced it, you find out that um, God hates divorce, the divorcee hates divorce, the spectators it's hate divorce, the children, everybody hates divorce. <laughs> nobody likes divorce. Nobody. Nobody, nobody stands up day one and said, the purpose I want to marry now is to divorce in two years. No, but no, at least no, no sensible or normal person will do that. So nobody plans to divorce. However, we talked about the fact that human nature is there. People make errors. So we cannot, er in anything we do, we cannot eradicate the part of human beings making mistakes. We can't eradicate that. There's nothing else we have seen in scripture where God doesn't give people another chance. There's nothing else. Even people that have been murderers before, God still recruits them. Even people that have done abortions, God still gives them children. Even people that have missed their purpose, God still brings them back to start again. Even Samson and Co. God allowed their hair grow again. So if you look at everything about God, 
I've not seen anywhere else people say that God cannot give another chance. It's only in this issue of marriage people want to, and it's by because of misinterpretation of scripture, that people want to say, oh, once you have made a mistake, you must forever live with the mistake. I, I don't think it, it tallies or is consistent with, like you said, the scriptures or even the nature and the redemptive character of God. So divorce is not God's will. We are not encouraging divorce. We, I'm a marriage counselor. I travel around the world yeah. telling people to have a good marriage and have a purposeful marriage, have a powerful marriage. So we, we cannot encourage divorce. To stay married and help people to be restored. Yes, restored. We, yeah. This is what I do even with all my life. So I cannot be spending time scattering what I'm, I've spent close to 30 years building. So we do not believe in divorce in any way. We're not encouraging. However, scripture itself gives that, um, you know, grace that if for some reason the marriage becomes unbearable, becomes dangerous, you know, um, we must save life. We must, we must rescue the person first. And God gives them you know, um, a second chance or another chance. So um, divorce is not God's will. Divorce is not a sin. There's no such scripture that says it's a sin. All right, people are just interpreting that when you remarry, you are living in adultery. And we have looked at it to see that that's not what um, Scripture says. The Scripture cannot even say that because the Scripture just was refer referencing was in Deuteronomy where divorce started. And in those Scriptures, they gave permission for the person that is divorced to marry. We even have to establish, man of God, that the whole divorce thing started as a form of rescue for the oppressed. It wasn't because God wants this useless man or useless woman to marry as many people as they want. Yeah, yeah. That's so, you, you must get, you know, God is always redemptive. You must understand where God is coming from. Like Pastor mentioned, people were being tormented, people were being abused, and God was like, look, instead of you to abuse my child, release her. That's the concept, that's how divorce started. Yeah. It was not in the plan, but human beings in their nature began to marry women and oppress them and not take care of them. And, you know, keep her aside and go and marry somebody else and she's stuck here, not being taken care of financially, not being taken care of sexually, not being taken care of emotionally. And God said, you know what? Instead of suffering or punishing this woman here, release her so that she can marry somebody else. And people don't realize that that same, you see, the, the Bible was written within a culture. Yes. And the culture within which the Bible was written is a patriarchal culture, just yes. like we have in Africa. Yes. So people say, why did Jesus not have a female disciple? Right? Yes. These are all, is a cultural, cultural issues. dimension to Yes, it doesn't mean that. When you don't understand culture and religion, it's yes. also an issue. When you come to Africa, you see a lot of African women were brought up to look up to their husband, husband as yes. the one that will provide for, for them. them. Yes. And many families don't even send their daughters to, to school. school. Yes. Because they say you are in the Yes. Some of them take care of you. Yes. So many of our parents that we thought were married for 50 years, they stayed because they had no option. Yes, they were not economically were not empowered. Economically empowered. So and people have now to tried to make it a scriptural principle. Yeah. Meanwhile, it's just a cultural. It was a culture. So now, yes. you now, that's why they're having problems now when they travel abroad. Yes. Because now in Nigeria, you think your mouth is based on your ability to, to provide. provide. You now go abroad now. Find out that it's not you are earning like 3,000, your wife is earning 13. Yes. You now discover that only you yes. cannot carry the load. Yes. And the woman is now doing a lot and she's now feeling that. Yes. Now and because you've have, oppressed her, you have oppressed before, her. She because now is, you were loving her right, right from the beginning, even if she's back. earning more, yeah. it shouldn't rock your home. Because I tell people that it's not the Western world that is destroying marriage. Yes. The marriage was never really strong. strong. Yes. <laughs> it was just revealing what was and, it yeah. and then the man is not feeling like a man, man anymore, anymore because his manhood is he's about to <laughs> And now that he can't provide, he's abnormal a man. Yeah, and yes. then the woman go and make a mistake yes. to say or act in some Is it because you are providing? And then <laughs> they begin to so culturally so many of these people so you see a lot of women now growing up in you know in abusive marriages and they are there because they are not empowered yes. and then we now have the other side where they now there are now women that are now empowered and they now say okay since i'm empowered now yes. you see what i yes. then, then we go into all kinds of yeah and we just mess up what god wants yes marriage there's a beautiful be structure enjoyed, already yes and not to be endured yes Marriage is meant to be enjoyed, oh, and, not, yeah, and everybody yeah. deserves to be happy. Yes. God wants us to enjoy marriage. How I used to tell people, this sex, as it is sweet, sweet, that God created me. Yes. So you yeah. God sat down, he looked, he said, hey, these people, let me, no, you don't need money. You don't, whether you are rich or poor, yeah. he didn't even do, you don't need to go and buy this in the market. Yes. He created it free yeah. of charge. Yeah. If God can see that to create that kind of sweet thing, yeah. that's how sweet he wants your life to be. Yes. To tell you how he wants to, anything that is messing up, your joy, toxic environment, well, because that brings you, we talk of adultery, abandonment, and abuse. There's a fourth one, which is other circumstances so yes. that may not be documented, or... but based on case by case issues. issues you yes. cannot look at it by the spirit because you say, ah, this one, no, this one, no, this one, no, this one, no. Because now, you know, all this one we're talking about now, you know, it's done down chain now. When you're even meeting a man now, you have to ask, were you born a man? Yeah. <laughs> because the guy, if he be woman before, we don't become yes, man. Yes, if he yes, be man, yes. we don't become. So yes. we are even dealing with the other one. Yes, we are dealing with deeper issues. So yes. now we have a man that became a woman. 
and a woman that became a man, and they married and now they have divorced. divorced. <laughs> so the man used to be a woman, the woman used to be a man. To see the confusion now, people are getting married to animal. People are going to do surgery now to become animal. Yeah. It's going to get messier because we're in the end times, and Jesus has said. And, and even pastor, there, there are cases where somebody has married and the man has never had sex with the woman. Yeah. So in those kind of cases, again. The marriage is not consummated. Not There's no marriage so, to be dissolved. I just need people to understand that there are too many circumstances that... I said it in can... church, was it like two or three weeks ago, that we need to now deal with um, the pandemic of sexless marriages. Yes. Because like uh, uh, I think uh, Albert was talking yes. about, when the people were single, we're saying don't, 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 don't have sex. Now they don't marry. marry. Have, have sex, sex. Because have sex. you'll be shocked that many couples Oh, there are many marriages. sexless. Many sexless sexless. marriages. As we return, let's ponder on the profound reflections shared by these two leaders. Pastor Kingsley Okonkwo's assertion that divorce, while not God's will, is not a, is not a sin. Under, he says that it underscores a pivotal aspect of Christian doctrine, the endless capacity for forgiveness and the opportunity for second chances. The perspective aligns with the core of our faith, highlighting God's redemptive nature and his desire for his children's happiness and well-being. The discussions also tackle the cultural and societal dimensions of marriage and divorce, acknowledging the challenges faced by individuals in different contexts and the necessity of understanding and compassion. The leaders emphasize that marriage is not to be endured but enjoyed, a reminder of God's intent for love and partnership to be sources of joy and fulfillment. As we reflect on these narratives, let's consider the scripture, Romans chapter 8, verse 28. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. This verse encourages us to trust in God's plan, even when our paths take unexpected turns. So what are your thoughts on the redemptive power of God in the context of divorce and remarriage? How do you think we can, as the church, better support individuals navigating these challenging experiences? Kindly share your thoughts in the comment section, like and subscribe for more discussions that enrich our faith and understanding. And until we see in our next video, I remain Grace Daily Motivation, where the supernatural has become the normal. God bless you.